Hi, everyone who's watching on YouTube. Um, last week, we went through the first half of the vectors functions from DeepLy 1.1.0. And this week, Shah is going to finish off, which this could be the end of our DeepLy Tidyverse docs deep dive. Um, so, yeah, take us away, Shah. Thank you, Jack. So, last time we were at the n distinct. We covered it, and then there are some five to six functions remaining. So we will start from NA. This is basically used to replace something in the vector. For example, we have some string which is not in the appropriate form or a number which is not numeric, and all the rest of are a bit in the what we want. So we can use this function to replace that one value with the uh, NANs. So here, this first value in the star world's height vector was 172, which has become NA here, this one. So we can actually provide which value we want to convert uh, in, in, in instead of putting an index of the value. Okay, and actually we, we can replace NANs with the NA, uh, and both of both of these will work. So in here, I have a z vector, which have NANs, and I have converted this to NA uh, by using the NA if. Okay, uh, and then near is actually used to uh, optimize value to the nearest uh, precision value or for a better accuracy. So for example, if we take square root of two and then take a square, it should be something near to two, but not exactly two. Okay, it is equal to two. Uh, here we are actually comparing this two value with this value, this one. So we are actually trying to say that if the first value is equal to the next value, then give us the output that this is true or not. So in the logical form, we get that, yes, you are right that these values are equal. And there is an additional argument here, which is not actually we write two is equal to two. We we do that in the if 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 statements, but we do not get that in the in the if statement, sorry, fails to saying that we put a tolerance of something. So this tall is actually putting a tolerance that how much decimal points or how much accuracy we want between by the uh, by for the comparison between the first and the second value so in the in the documents they used this value of machine double precision value of something um, and they say that this is safer than using equal to equal to because it has some built in tolerance so it and I have searched for some other functions. This, this this argument is actually in some other functions as well to putting some tolerance in the value for the comparison. Okay, okay, and then comes this nth first and last. These are actually used to get a value from the vector. Nth mean what value we, you want to get. So in here, for example, if I say I want to get the eleventh value from the vector of the height, I will get one eighty eight. So and and uh, you can put any number here. You just need to specify the position in the vector value. Okay, and the first is actually uh, will give us the first value, first value in the vector, just like um, uh, just like a first value uh, we use in the head command to see some uh, rows. We we can actually use this for on the data frame to get the first row or the last to use the last row, which is actually coming on. So this will give me the first row. And I, I'm not sure if we can put some value here. Let's check. Like I want to put first five, if, if this works or not, but I'm not sure. So it, it will be equal to head command if it works, but Okay, so these have actually the order by which we actually seen last time the order by and the default. These are the things. 
Uh, no, I guess this is not the. Yeah, it says up top it, um, single value, right? In yeah. the description. So I think it might really just be a single value. A single integer specifying the position. So. Yeah, but that, that's only in the nth function, right? Like, yeah, this this n argument isn't in first or last. Yeah. OK. I guess if you wanted like the first n or something like that, if you want like a, a slice, uh, is that right? Something like that. Although there we'd be working with data frames. Yeah, I, I just wanted to replicate the head here if it, it can work, but there is something other, some other things going on. Okay, so it, it can be useful to get the first value and the opposite of that to get is the last value from the data frame. So in one vector, if I want to get the last value, I will put last com a comment from the deployer and it will give the last value. And uh, in the nth command, actually we can uh, put the negative indexes just like we get in the vector to get the last value. So if I put minus two, it will give the second last row from the vector from the data frame or from the vector it will work in both cases so in here it will give me the second last value which is actually the na value if we want to verify it uh, this one will be easy to put it like that so so this one we are getting this value here okay okay and then comes the n tile uh this is actually related to the rank 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 is actually a built-in function in the r to get some rankings and i have put a description and afterwards we will study in detail the n tile will actually uh used to uh, make some buckets from on the basis of the rank in the numerical vectors so for example, in the height, we have some values, some numerical values that on some n is. We want to make some buckets uh, in three buckets or five buckets. So it will distribute the values in the buckets. So it can be useful when we want to make some calculations in one bucket or on the basis of their rank. So if we can look at its documentation, it is just like the very rough rank which breaks the input into n buckets um, and this this argument the n tile is breaking the ties i guess we have seen that in tile this is n tile is actually when we have a vector and we have values which are repeating ties is actually making a tie not like the com combination ties if we have a 30 value then we have again a 30 value so th there is a tie between the values so the, uh, this tie is actually showing that that if we have uh, if we have ties, we can have different arguments in here, and uh, we get the rank on the basis of these values. So in here, it is uh, distributing the values on the basis of a bucket. So this this first value is in the bucket number two, then the bucket number one again, and the bucket number one. But I'm not sure how it is doing that, but it is useful to make it. Uh, to make ranks on the basis of this function. Yeah, that's quite, in, you know, the this part like it ignores the ties. So you could have the same value is in lots of different buckets. Yes. And that seems quite weird. Yeah. Um, there, there are actually some other function. Maybe we can, we will understand a bit more. Okay, then there was an argument last time in the, I forgot in which function, I guess in between or in lead or lag. Yeah, this order by. Uh, there is another separate function in, in vector function in here, order by, which is actually used to ordering the output. Uh, for So for example, I have two vectors, x, which is from 10 to one and y, which is from one to 10. And we get the cumulative sum of the y. This is, this should be from in, in the increasing from, from one to 55. So in here, it is ordering X on the basis of the cumulative sum of Y. So this is uh, actually doing that. It is having the function call to a window function, but what, what does this mean? Does anybody have any idea? What does this mean? Window function output? Yeah, 
So I know that's a word that's used in SQL order um, yeah. window functions, but I've never fully internalized what it means. Okay. So they, they actually name something from the legal. When translated to SQL, it will modify the order clause over the over function. Okay. So Normally it's like you're doing, if you're doing a sliding window, if you're doing something over a sliding window, say like yes. length of your window is three or whatever, like you're taking just those values, like you've got a, a subset of the values. Like, I don't exactly get what it means here, but it seems like it should be related to that thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh... So it, it can be useful for uh, ordering the values on the basis of another vector, but it but the, there is a, a, an another option to put a function in here, so it, it can be useful in that case. Okay, and then comes the percent rank and cumulative distribution. Uh, this cumulative uh, cumulative dist function it counts the total number of values which are less than or equal to the value which we want to study and then divide it by the number of observations. So if uh, in the star wars uh, head command, we have values from 172 or one something, but if we look closely, the 172 is less than 167, 96 and 178. So for 172, it will count the total number of values which are less than 172, and then divide it by the total number of observations. So this is the idea of this here for the cumulative distribution. But there is a difference that in the percent rank, we, we uh, subtract from the one, the result of the uh, these functions. But the, the I have searched about, about like why this is the difference between the percent rank in here. So the actual idea is in the percent rank, we uh, the rankings are actually from zero to one in here in these functions and the other functions as well. So zero represents the lowest value in the rank. The, it has the lowest value, just like in percentile, we have the 0% or 25% is just like that. So in the cumulative distribution, we use uh, the idea is the same in both of these functions, like 172 minus the values which are less than 172, and then dividing by the total number of observations and then getting a rank. But in here, we have an additional value of, uh, and divides it by the values minus one. So more or less it is the same, but the there is a difference in, if we, uh, maybe we can look at its documentation for cumulative distribution. So in here, what they do is they apply a function on this x vector, this one, and they say if the value in our study is less than or equal to, so for example, if 176 is less than 172, then divided by the length of total x. So in this is the, actually the, uh, way of computation of these two functions. Um, uh, actually, I've searched about this, like what is the mathematical thing going on? There is a formula actually for this, this very complex formula, like four or five terms, but there is a formula for calculating the rank percentage and doing it with the that in here. And notice that we have the values in here without the decimal points these ones. So this is actually due to the percentage calculation. I've seen the formula for, I forgot to write it here, but these ones are actually giving us values in the percentage. So 0 0.6 is actually 0 0.6% of the total one. So that's why the output is a bit different in here. Okay, and then the recode and recode factor, they said that it is superseded by the case match. The idea is the same, like we put, if the vector has value A, replace it with one or value as vector B, replace it with two. So they say that the case match is doing the same. So we are superseding it with the case match. They give a value in here, they give an example. 
in here, but they also put the value, uh, an example of the case match in the same case. So record is actually doing the same for a character vector, replace A with apple and B with banana, but case match actually does the same thing. We define the character vector only once and then we do the operations, which was a bit different from the case one, but they say it is superseded by the K, uh, case match, both of these functions, okay, record factor and decode both. Uh, so, uh, record factor. I think there is no example of a record factor here, record underscore factor function. All of this is record, record, and record. But the idea is the same that it is superseded uh, and we are uh, getting replacement of the values uh, on by, by after defining the vector only once. Uh, okay. And then there are three functions related to ranking again, the row number and the minimum rank and the dense rank. Uh, these, these actually are related to the rank function in the R. In the R, we have a rank function. Uh, Average rank and sample ranks. Uh, not this one. Maybe I am missing something. Yeah, this one. Okay, so it has some arguments like related to average, first, last, and random, and those things. And what are these doings? These these are the what I told you about the ties that we have values from. Uh, which are repeating in the data frame. So for example, I have put an example here. In this data frame, we have repeating values like 30 and 30, these are repeating this themselves, but 10, 20 are not. So in the rank function, we have this ties method argument. First thing that this thing. So it is giving the rank on the basis of the values in here. So the 10 has gets the rank of one, 30, gets the rank of identical ranks. In the average rank, we get the identical rank. So in the average rank, the ties are assigned to the every rank. For example, if the two value tie for the second rank, both will be assigned, assigned the same value, same rank. This is the idea in the average rank. In the first rank, we, uh, in the first rank, actually, if the two values tie for the second rank, both will be assigned a rank of two. So rank can be repetitive in that case. So there is an explanation for all, all of these arguments. So these three values, the vector functions, these row number, minimum rank, and dance, and these are actually related to this base R function. So how, how these are doing? Row number, this gives every output a unique rank. For example, this 10, 20, 20, 30 would get the ranks 1, 2, 3, 4. It's equivalent to this first one. So this is actually this first one, this rank argument. So they have uh, put an, a, an alternative of the base R rank function, but the uh, idea is the same. So in the minimum rank, actually it gives the every tie the same smallest value. So 10, 20, and this will give, get the, so 20 will become the rank, will have a rank of two, two then again two, and then four. But in here, there is a, uh, we get the different, uh, we get, uh, do not get the repeated constitutive uh, consecutive values one two three four just like the dense rank value in here or uh, just like the row number value in here and they say that if we put the uh, use the minimum rank this is actually using the, the rank and putting ties method equal to this minimum this one so let's look at the examples how they are doing it i think this is the same uh, Same thing which uh, I have written here. They have given the same examples. So in here, for example, row number, this one, let's take this example. And instead of using this, I will say, let's put in here. Okay, so we have these values. 
then we want to use the this command so the row number the idea behind the row number let's repeat it again it will give every input a unique rank okay so every input in here the one gets the rank of one and then again the two this two gets the rank of two in here how it is working yeah oh actually we are actually filtering on the basis of row number okay so if the rank is uh, equal to one then we get the rows okay so all of these values have a rank of one because we are filtering on the basis of x this vector so the idea is actually uh, to get a rank uh, to uh, get a unique rank basis of the uh, to get a rank basis on the unique values in the data frame so uh, all of these are related like in one of in one of the fact, uh, functions we get the unique values and then uh, in the other one we get the repetitive values and in, in the in the uh, in the third one we get a different result so we got a an example for the row number let's try it for the minimum rank so in here we are actually filtering the rows which have a rank of one and we say if the value in the group column has a value one then it should get rank one and the two will get the rank two uh one again and the three will be, will be the same um, let's look at the behind the id column so this one is actually the same so we say if the minimum rank we are filtering the rows which have the rank of one based on the minimum rank function which has an idea that it gives every tie the same smallest value okay so the 10 will become one so So in here, we have the value one, then two, and then three. But the ranks remain same. There is a maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but you get the idea or you get you're getting confused by it. Because if we study at this, it's easy to understand. But example is a bit sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know why they go for filter as the first examples. Because like, I was thinking, why doesn't it just use mutate? And then I had a look in the docs. And if you scroll down, it says like it's easier to see what's happening with mutate. Um, and if that's also true of min rank, but it, you'd think so, right? Because like, you just get to see, and then you'd filter in the next step. But yeah, for min rank though, change it, right? Because you wouldn't want group ID equals row number. You'd be setting the rank. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm confused by. Maybe I'm not confused. It's so, it, a bit easy to understand here in this case. So for example, we are grouping by this group column. So all the groups, yeah, yeah, yeah. They this get the rank one, two, three because row number actually gives the uh, value a uh, rank based on the unique value. Yeah, I, I mean, I personally normally use it like this, although I just now I don't use group by, I just use the dot by. Um, okay. But with the like the filtering and stuff that it's doing. So, for example, if we say we have we want to use the minimum rank. We, yeah, we wouldn't want it to be the group ID though anymore, right? right? What is giving me error? You'd, you'd have to specify what it is that it's the min rank of, right? Like at the moment, oh, it's got okay. no. 
if this works no you'd want a column i think like if it's i can't remember what your yes. column name is but x y or whatever so you wouldn't oh. it wouldn't be the group id anymore okay so this three this three has a rank this the, the this one has a rank of three because this has a value of three. So in the minimum rank, we get the rank based on the smallest value. Mm -hmm. So this two has a rank of two, but in here we change the group. The group has changed and then the rank has also changed. So this is actually the idea which I get. I'm not confusing you all. <laughs> okay, so well, let's use the dense rank at last and finish the deep layer. Uh, dense rank. So dense rank is actually is the same with the ties method is equal to dense, but the in the dense rank we doesn't leave any gaps. Because in the minimum rank, we get we can get the value one, two, two, four. So the three is skipped. But in the dense rank, the value in between does not skip. The three, uh, three, the four is only shown with three and then continues on. So in the dense rank, it should be a bit different than the minimum rank in the case of if there are different values in the x so if we had a value equal to four for example i just put a value of four in six in here for example then the dense rank then the dense rank should remain the same but the minimum rank should change oh, it is not changing <laughs> it's a bit confusing actually because uh, maybe Rebecca, Rebecca can help us because in the uh, in the explanation of these arguments, they say that it is it comes from SQL here. If there is something in SQL like this, like that, uh, I am. I mean, it, yeah, I'm not a good SQL person whatsoever. I just okay. use it occasionally, so. Knowing these, de I don't know these details in SQL either, <laughs> but it, I do know that they sometimes try to have equivalence between things. Okay, but the, uh, actually the idea is a bit clear, but the, the examples are a bit weird here. So if you if you in the the what I wrote here, if you look at these first three lines, it will be easy to understand these these three lines. And I, in the final output, I will actually put only these values, these three lines. So in the row number, we get the, the rank on the basis of the unique values. In the minimum rank, the, the value in between can be skipped. So one, two, two, four, we can get that. But in the dense rank, the value in between will not be skipped. So this is actually that. But uh, we have seen in the rank, in the base, we, we get all, some different arguments as well, like aver average, last, but there is no function in here in the vector functions. Only these three are discussed. Um, okay. Wait, yes. Can you not um, you know, I don't know. You can't do it, can you? You can't input how it would. No, ignore that. No. Okay, that's it for the vector functions. And uh, after that comes in some other commands, which are, or we can move to some uh other packages now no, yeah no, stop the... um so like before we do does that, is anyone confused about any part of vectors or like wants to double back or double click on anything or do we wrap it up i think i'm good for now i might Kind of uh, outside of this, maybe look more carefully at some some things that uh, I hadn't used before. But uh, no, I think the presentation was super clear. 
Yeah, cool, nice. Um, I'd guess by Rebecca's silence that she's also good to move on. Um, yeah. Cool. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to stop the recording because I feel like until the end, or not even, we don't even have to take all the time, but um, oops, end. <laughs>